Thank you and welcome to the show this morning. The topic this morning is shelter for the homeless. And we're fortunate to have with us to talk about shelter for the homeless, uh, Mr. James Settles and uh, Mr. Carter Abels, uh, both members of an organization called Ephesus House. And of course, uh, Mr. Settles and uh, Mr. Abels, let me welcome the two of you to the show this morning and to tell you how delighted we are to have the two of you with us this morning, and especially to talk about an issue that is very, very prevalent and very, very popular this morning because we find that there are many situations where people are without housing. And I think that uh, your organization is involved in dealing with uh, housing uh, for the various, uh, various groups. So let's start off, Ms. Settles, by having you uh, give us some information in reference to your background, your education, and some of your experiences. And of course, Mr. Uh, Abels will do the same thing. And then after this first segment, of six minutes, then we'll get back, uh, we'll have our first commercial break, and then we'll come back uh, for our second segment, and then we'll talk about other things, and by that time, we should have a fairly good idea in terms of some of the challenges that are faced by individuals who are seeking housing. So let's start off with you, uh, Mr. Settles, by giving you, giving us some information in reference to your background, your education, and some of your experiences. Well, I'm James Settles, and thank you for the opportunity uh, to be here. Uh, uh, part of my background is I'm, I remember uh, going to prison myself back in 86 and, and also getting out of prison in uh, uh, 93 actually and it was from there uh, I remember starting a home uh, called Ephesus House in 03 and part of that was because I went to prison and battled with a drug addiction and all of that and as I came into a personal relationship with God, he began to show me how to do this thing the correct way. And I'm under the old school. To whom much is given, I believe much is required. So that's how Ephesus House was actually formed, to reach back and help others uh, the way people help me. Very good. Mr. Uh, Carter Abel, what about your situation? Sure. So my name's Carter Abel. Mm -hmm. I, I grew up in northeast Arkansas in a pretty rural community. Uh, moved to Nashville in 2009. And moving to Nashville was really the first experience I'd, I'd ever time, first time I'd ever encountered anything regard, resembling homelessness. And it was, it was mind blowing to me. And uh, so I got connected in the nonprofit community here, got connected to James and Aphsis House through a former professor, and just love being able to contribute to the housing conversation and giving guys a chance to, to turn their lives around get a new start. Mr. Sells, in, in, in terms of talking about shelter uh, for, the, uh, for the homeless and various other groups, uh, what are some of the groups that you would identify as your target area in terms of individuals who come to you and where do they come to and how do you meet them when they get there? And so we've got about two minutes before this segment ends. So let's give us that kind of information. Well, we actually put an emphasis on men that are coming out of incarceration and men that are homeless that battle with substance abuse issue, and which both of those issues I battle with at one time. And that's what I mean when I say he delivered me. I remember going into treatment several times, but it was really coming into a personal relationship with Jesus that things got better. And so in a real sense, you're using your own personal experiences to reach out to others. How, how long have you uh, been working in this area? I mean, this organization, how is this a relatively uh, new organization or what? Ephesus House was started in 03, and we now have four facilities where one of them we use for actually um, uh, staff and the other three places we house me and we can house up to 28 at any one time. And so you've got a very, very viable organization and you're able to reach out to a large number of in, uh, especially incarcerated individuals coming out of the uh, system who might need uh, some kind of housing, et cetera. And so what we'll do, we'll take our first commercial break and then mm -hmm. Mr. Carter, when we come back, we'll start uh, with you and we'll have an eight minute segment and that will give you an opportunity mm -hmm. to talk about some of your opportunities and some of your uh, actions in terms of dealing with Ephesus uh, House. And uh, in addition to uh, perhaps say as much as you possibly can about Arkansas, because <laughs> I happen to uh, know somebody who, who came from Arkansas and, 
and, and of course I'm from Arkansas myself. W and, wonderful. And so we're from a place called Hope, Arkansas. Mm -hmm. And I think that uh, you indicated that you recently came to Nashville. And so mm -hmm. you probably know something about Hope, Arkansas. And when we come back, uh, we want to hear some of the things that you have to say in terms of how you came to Nashville and how you became involved with uh, Mr. Settles. And of course, we'll be, we'll be back with our audience following this very, very short commercial break. Anything that you think might be of some significance, of some mm -hmm. importance, dealing with this net, uh, this eight-minute segment, you'll have about three minutes, and then you'll have three minutes to uh, sort of build into what he's talking mm -hmm. about, okay. and then I'll go back to him for another couple of minutes, and, mm -hmm. then, okay. you, and then we'll be out of that eight-minute segment. Uh, okay. Okay. Yeah, I'll lay out the need, and I'll lead in so you can talk about expansion and eventually okay. the campus. I wouldn't talk about locations yet, Okay. but... And and also, I'm not going to talk about how many people we're talking about housing. Either. Yeah. We just want to <laughs> increase the number of people we serve. Okay. And so what I'll, what I'll do, I'll introduce the two of you again. Welcome back. We have with us to talk about shelter for the homeless, uh, Mr. James Settles and Mr. Carter Abels. And then I'll make some statement in reference that will tie the first part to the second part. And then we'll start with you uh, talking about uh, some of your experiences and some of the things that brought you to Nashville. Uh, Tennessee dealing with housing. Take about uh, about three or four minutes, three minutes for that. And then when you get through that three minutes, you'll go to pick up on him and tie into what he's, he's talking about. Listen to mm -hmm. what he has to say. Thank you and welcome back to the second segment of the show for today. We're talking to Mr. James Settles and Mr. Carter Abels. And the topic is shelter for the homeless. Uh, Mr. Abels, before we had our first commercial break, we promised that we would give you an opportunity to say something about the great state of Arkansas <laughs> that sent you to Nashville and it will give you an opportunity to sort of bring in the kind of information dealing with shelter for the uh, homeless. And then uh, Mr. Settles will uh, sort of pick up on what you have to say and then we'll be able to deal with this eight minute segment from that perspective. Mm -hmm. Sure. So I, I was, you know, fortunate to grow up in Jonesboro, Arkansas. So just about an hour northwest of Memphis. So close to Tennessee my whole life. Um, wound up coming to Nashville in particular to go to Belmont University here, uh, and got connected to the social entrepreneurship program there, which is a really neat program in, in kind of launching people towards addressing social issues. Um, but talking about housing and, and what we do, you know, one of the things that uh, is pretty staggering is just the immense need for this kind of housing. I mean, every year in Tennessee, 16,000 people are released from prison. And most of those people, when they're released, if they don't have a support system, if they don't have a job or family to take them in, they're essentially given the clothes on their backs, uh, a one-way bus pass, and, and maybe 20 to, to $50. So if you don't have a support system in place, homelessness is, is inevitable or those people wind up back incarcerated. And so uh, the challenge that, that AFSIS House faces is how can we take in as many of those guys as possible and give them a chance to get on their own feet, to become contributing members of society, to find stability, um, and, and to, to re-enter society as, as productive citizens. And so, James, you've been involved in, in, with this organization for for many years, have you not? Mm -hmm. yes. and what have you found in terms of your experience, looking back over all of the things that you've done so far, what are some of the things that you'd like our audience to know this morning about some of the challenges that you have to uh, face? Certainly, uh, you're trying to deal with incarcerated individuals, 16,000, I'm told, out of the system each uh, year, and, and certainly you can't meet all of those needs, but what are some of the needs that you're able to meet? Well, I really believe that uh, one of the things that's a plus for Ephesus House is uh, when men learn better, they actually do do better. 
when men come to Ephesus House, one of the first things we do is help them get their ID because when you're homeless, you really pretty much have nothing. We help them get ID. Uh, we have classes uh, that are centered around job readiness, job retention, uh, financial literacy. And in the evening time, the men are inundated with classes like critical thinking, relapse prevention, that's understanding addiction, anger management. Well, anger management covers a lot of stuff like family reunification. And we have been able to see that when people are impacted with those type of life skills and putting them in an environment where they can grow and be the best that they can be, that is staggering how people actually do better. And so in a real sense, you've got a large number of success stories that Correct. you can deal with having dealt with this organization since what? Uh, 03. 03, 2003. That's and so you, 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 you've got a large number of, of, of examples of individuals who've been able to come there and sort That's of get correct. their lives back together. Uh -huh. That's correct. Mm -hmm. That's and, correct. And, 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 and so, Mr. Abels, uh, in terms of uh, your uh, situation, what do you do exactly uh, at uh, Ephesus House? Sure. So, so James handles all the program. He's our executive director. I just help to try to keep the lights on. <laughs> so I, I do the behind the scenes fundraising and, and trying to, to bring in enough money to ensure that we can serve the guys as well as possible. What, what, what kind of money do you, I think, that you need in terms of dealing with this? I, I think that you work dealing with grants and other kinds mm -hmm. of methods to uh, bring. Uh, do you find that there's a, a community of individuals who are out there willing to help you do what you, you do, or do you find that it's difficult to raise enough money to do what you're doing? Uh, mm. Speak for, from a financial point of view in terms sure. of what you're doing. Sure, I mean, there, we're fortunate to, to have access to, to some grant opportunities to help what we do. You know, there's, there's unfortunately a stigma sometimes around guys that are former offenders. Um, but we believe that, that no one is too far gone to start over and, and find a life of fulfillment. And so we've been fortunate to, to find people in the community um, that believe that mm -hmm. and who can come alongside us and, and help empower these men to, to do that. And so um, so we, we do, we fundraise uh, with individuals, we do grants. Right now we're trying to raise $100,000 by November to build a new house, mm -hmm. um, which we're pretty excited about, mm -hmm. being able to grow our capacity. Mm -hmm. And so you, you've already got uh, structures already uh, completed and what you're getting ready to uh, go into a new building phase. Is that what you're saying? Why don't you say something about some of the structures that you already have completed? Sure. So we have, uh, James mentioned, we have three transitional facilities right now. S serve about 28 guys at a time. Um, the, the house that we're hoping to construct, we already own the property. Uh, this fall, will house about eight more. But James can share more. We're, we're hoping to construct a, a new campus that will be able to sort of bring all of this under one roof and really increase our capacity. And, and, and in terms of reaching out, and uh, are these individuals involved in some other kind of uh, activity, uh, work-related activity that will not only support them but would also help to support uh, the uh, facility itself? I mean, what, what do they do? Certainly they have a a program worked out for education and et cetera, but what are some of the other things that they might be able to do to help themselves? Uh, well, well, one of the things uh, I'm constantly seeing is people have to be in an environment where they can grow and be the best that they can be, and that's why we are so excited about what we do at Ephesus House, and uh, we're talking about um, a, a bigger number of people that we're trying to serve. Uh, one of the things we see that happen is when it comes to life skills and what we do right now, it's perfect. And the only thing that we're talking about adding as we add more people to the campus is an apprenticeship program. Because it is true, you don't work, you don't eat. So how do we train and give people life skills, not only life skills, but give them uh, a, 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 a gift or a trade that they'll be able to fend for themselves. And our goal is hopefully a person can be at Ephesus House for a year and be able to say, hey, I got 2,600 hours in carpentry or 
I got 1,900 hours in electrical. And to me, that, when you get the man, you not only get him, but you get everything that he comes in contact with. That's his children. That's his wife, if he have a wife, or that's his girlfriend. But the key is how do you give him good? Okay, so what we'll do is we'll take our first commercial break, and we'll, our second commercial break, and we'll be back with our audience following this very, very short commercial break. <laughs> no, we are right. Uh, so, what's this last segment? This is yeah. this is ten minutes. This is your show. I mean, <laughs> you know, I don't know anything about this. You know, okay. when you when these folks graduate or get out of here, I mean, do you have a f group that are going through? And have you got some f folks got that you. call back and say, "Hey, yeah. I got a job and I'm doing." You know, give us some okay. examples that you know of some of the folks that are doing whatever y'all are doing. Yeah. And you got 28 folks in three different uh, buildings facilities, and yeah. facilities. Mm -hmm. How long, what's the general length uh, that they stay there? Do they come out of incarceration, stay there for a few uh, months, and then go out and get a good job or whatever, yeah. you know, some, okay. some kind of things yeah. that, that, that we want to hear. Yeah. You see, and, I, and, I, and, and, and so, you know, and that's why you. I want you to tell your story, you know, okay. because you know what, you know, you got some folks that probably came out and uh, working over at NSA, uh, NES, uh, what you know, uh, working at different jobs, uh, involved in different kinds of things, and have said certain things about your program and et cetera. Uh -huh. yeah, that kind, of, you know. Uh, gotcha. Yeah, just so okay. it's, you got ten minutes, and, and and so try to keep that chair still. It's, yeah, the, the camera follows that chair, and 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 so uh, you know, just try to do that. Mm -hmm. uh, we got ten minutes, and so we're gonna. I start with. Did we start with? You, you start with him. My me last time. So. Okay, so we're yeah. gonna start with you. And who me? And, yeah. Cool. Did when, did we start? Did we end with you last time? We, we started ended. with him. Okay, but we, we ended with you. Ended, ended with ended me. With you. We we got to we'll start with, over here with you. And okay. The clock isn't as true, so I'm okay. gonna keep doing what I'm doing. Yeah, we. Well, you did come out good on that last one. Okay. Right yeah. On yeah, I know. Yeah, after 30 years, <laughs> I, I generally come out. You know, I love you. Okay, uh, so so uh, we've got nine minutes and 50 seconds. Yes. Okay, and so and so that's what we have. And so, uh, what 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 I want to know is some of the things that you think people ought to know about your organization and your needs and some of the successes. You know, mm -hmm. that kind of information. Mm -hmm. You know, if you got somebody that went through a carpentry program and they're now working on one of these big buildings that they have mm -hmm. around here and et cetera, because Thank you and welcome back to the final segment of the show for today. We're talking to Mr. James Settles and uh, Mr. Carter Abels. And they're giving us some information in reference to uh, the ability to deal with individuals who are homeless and especially those individuals who have been incarcerated. Let's see, uh, uh, Mr. Carter uh, Abels, let's see if you might be able to give us some information in reference to some of the things that you like our audience to know about what you're doing. And uh, we'll give you about three or four minutes to do that. And then Mr. Settles will have you to build up on what he has to say and we'll try to go from you to him over the okay. la last yeah. 10 minutes and give you an opportunity to sort of get a out as much information as you possibly can in reference to what the two of you are doing. So let's start off with you, uh, Ms. Davis. Sure. So, so one thing I think it's important for people to, to understand about the work that we do is, is that a lot of these, these issues that we're working with are deep-seated. Uh, it's not something as simple as housing or jobs, but it's taking a look at each individual person 
and hearing their story and where they came from and where they're trying to go. I mean, we have guys that come into the program that, I mean, their story starts when they're 13, 14 years old experiencing drugs for the first time uh, or growing up in broken households and that lead them down paths that wind up incarcerated or on the streets. And so one of the things that's really important for us is to work with each guy as an individual and connect him with each service and, and opportunity that that man needs. Very good. And, and, and of course, you've, you've got many successes that I'm sure uh, since 2003 that you've <laughs> been able to document uh, during that time. Talk, talk about some of the successes and some of the individuals and some of the challenges that you've had. Uh, some of the things that when you go to sleep at night, you think in terms of what you have to do tomorrow. And from that perspective, uh, give us that kind of insight into what, what goes on there. Well, one of the things I'm thankful for that Ephesus House provide is an environment that's safe, that's clean, and that's supportive to the client. Uh, even myself, you know, uh, a lot of people may look at me today and look at the glory, but really don't even know the story. You know, I too wrote the bus for six months and had to start off from uh, being faithful over little and allowing God to place you over much. So I, I try to take that same application and apply it to the client. And what I find that the client do is the client actually receives it and grow from it. Uh, we have several people that not only graduate the program and come back, but these men are just human beings just like anybody else, just made some bad decisions in the future and now are needing to get back centered up. So how do we help the client get centered back up? You know, uh, we've been dealing with an approach of we lock them up and throw away the key. Or when people make bad decisions or bad choices, even dealing with drugs, we want to kick them out of the car. But you know, people are worthy of an opportunity, and that's what we want to provide for the client is an opportunity. And our main hold now is to. Uh, contact different uh, agencies that will be willing to work with Ephesus House in a program, in an apprenticeship program, giving these guys an opportunity to learn a trade and to be the best that they can be. Because it is true, when you get a guy sober and you put him in an environment uh, where he can grow and be the best that he can be, uh, that employer, he gets a good employee, you know, and hopefully it's something that would not just only start from right there and be something that that client and that employee can uh, uh, have something to smile about as they go in the future. You know, uh, Mr. Carter, I think you uh, mentioned the fact that uh, you deal quite a bit with grants. Uh, what are some of the uh, things that you try to indicate in the grants that you're uh, applying for? And what are some of the responses that you have in reference to the grants? <clears throat> And do you have a, 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 any idea in terms of looking around at some of the building and, and some of the, all of that activity that's going on here and to try to buy into that? I think uh, mm -hmm. Mr. Sellers indicated that you're probably doing that. But talk about it from that perspective. We've got about five minutes mm -hmm. before we end this show for today. But I'm sure that our audience would be curious in reference to some of the things that, uh, some mm -hmm. of the needs that we're talking about here. Sure. So in any kind of... Uh any time that we approach a funder to, to try to partner with uh, to, to accomplish this work, uh, it's really important for us to communicate the need, which I've shared a bit about here. Um, our, our capacity to do something about it, which you know, we feel confident in our ability to, um, to really help these guys and get them to the place that they need to be and work with them to do that. Uh, and, and also just um, you know, identifying the opportunity for growth, uh, for us to, to really expand this ministry to do more. Um, so I mentioned you know, there's so many, there's such a, a huge need with so many guys on the streets today and coming out of incarceration. So we have 28 beds, but we have over 100 people on our waiting list at all times. Um, I mean, dozens of applications every week that, that we have to turn away. And so for us right now, a big focus is, you know, how can we build our foundation, make sure we're good, we're continuing to do the work that we can, but how can we take in more? How can we serve more? 
Um, so one of the things we're really excited about is, is uh, the, the growth of a new campus and a new facility. And, and we want people to, to participate in that, you know, buy into it and, and as a community rally around these guys. I mean, people can come and be a mentor to these guys. They can, they can come and, and, and even teach a class if that's their expertise, you know, they can come engage uh, and, and rally around these guys. And so that's really what we're looking for. Well, uh, Mr. Settles, uh, thinking in terms of uh, grants and opportunities, what have you done in reference to reaching out to the state of Tennessee uh, to uh, indicate that uh, they might be able to give you grants in order to help you? Uh, have you thought in terms of getting grants to federal grants as well as state grants? And what is the state of Tennessee doing in reference to that? Well, we have uh, reached out to the state and federal, and we get a small uh, uh, contribution from federal and state, mm -hmm. but it takes more than federal and state funding. It takes funding from all uh, angles, and when I say all angles, it takes funding from private donors, and, and we also want to make sure that the client buy into it too, so the client has some kind of responsibility as well because one of the things in America is nowhere do you live for free. So one of our things is, is we try to make sure that the client has a responsibility mm -hmm. into being into the program. That means he has to give something mm -hmm. because when he leaves Ephesus House, he's gonna have to pay rent somewhere. Mm -hmm. So we wanna do this thing where it's, it's, it, the foundation is right for everybody. So in a real sense, uh, they live there rent-free and, and, and without any kind of uh, compensation from them in terms of helping you to move your organization forward. Is that what we're saying? Yeah, but that may be initially. Mm -hmm. But see, our goal is how do we take a client that comes to Ephesus House with nothing and build that, help that client establish a foundation where that client is a taxpaying citizen and he's also participating in paying where he lives. And, and, and so it gives them an opportunity to demonstrate uh, the success of this program by giving back yes. uh, to the program. And while you've got uh, 28 individuals there, uh, these individuals, once they are there for a while, will have an opportunity to assist the, the uh, organization in terms of what you're all trying to do. Each person in a real sense represents uh, an individual who can reach out in order to support uh, your program. Is that what we're saying? That is mm -hmm. correct. Mm -hmm. That is correct. Now, now, Mr. Carter, what are some of the last statements? We've got about 50 mm. seconds here. What are some of the last statements that you'd like to uh, leave with our audience this morning in reference mm. to what you're doing here? Sure. Well, well thank you again for having us. And, and we're just, we're excited uh, with what we're doing. And, and we want uh, to encourage anyone who might be watching to, to participate. In this, in this work, it's so important. Um, feel free to call our office, go to our website, and, and get involved mm -hmm. and, and on a personal level with us, however they see fit. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and so